If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Of all the podcasts we did over, uh, over there at Paleo, Greenfield's episode was one of my favorites. It, it's up there. Well, I know, right? it for sure is my favorite that we've ever done with him. We've done a lot with Ben. Definitely. Yep. I yep. Mean, this we, is... we definitely broke some new ground, I think, uh, topic wise. Yeah, lately. Um, and you know what? What what I love about our show, too, is, and, it, and we'll, I will always, I think all of us will keep it this way where it's raw and just sometimes where our headspace is. And I know some people don't like it. They get frustrated if we're talking about political bullshit because that's the climate right now or we've got yeah. personal stuff going on. But. I mean, that's really the most, my favorite part about this show is that if it's on my fucking mind or it's on one of your guys' mind, like, yeah, we're talking about it. We're going to talk about it. And I think we've continued to get more comfortable with that. And even if that means those, you know, third rail type topics or taboo subjects that nobody else wants to address, like God, like religion, like spirituality, like. <sighs> Like politics, oh no! And you know, with Ben, we uh, we really dove into him and some of his beliefs and and God and yeah. things like that. We also so, talk about things like coffee enemas and how he injected stem cells oh, into his, his dick stem cells and his dick. all I kinds of the weird shit that, that he's done. Yeah, you know all that stuff. It was fun. His bike accident that he had uh, yes. while he was up there. <laughs> the one that I made fun of him in the <laughs> yeah, previous episode. Yeah, that he was he was riding a, an elliptical <laughs> so bike. Never choose a dumb bike, which is Dude, weird. Yeah. How about how about I I came out when we were. The, our drinking episode that we just did yesterday, right? And I was clowning on him and teasing him because of the stupid bike he was probably riding. <laughs> and then we interview Kyle. Kyle has no <laughs> idea that we had that conversation and he totally calls it him out. the same yeah. exact conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then, pretty funny. Then you actually get to hear Ben now in this episode kind of describe. <laughs> you know, that. all joking aside, I'm glad he's okay. Of yeah. Of course. No. We the guy, the guy turned immediately. And he heals like a like champion. An X-Men. Like I saw like what he Wolverine. looked like. Yeah, I saw what he looked like when he first fell off the bike. Yeah, and then two gnarly. days later, I'm like, "What? Yeah. How did you heal so fast? Maybe there's something to all this weird shit that he does himself. He's, he's, right? I don't know. Yeah, right? But this episode gets deep. Super immune system. This episode know. gets deep, and we have some really, really good conversation with him. And I agree, Adam. The best episode we've had with Ben Greenfield to date. Well, by I, far. one of the things about Ben is that you know he is an extremely unique individual and what i love about him is he is 100 percent comfortable with who he is mm -hmm. he's about a, he's real yeah he is super not, real he's not going to waver his beliefs or his thoughts because it's a tough question or it's something mm -hmm. that you know so he knows that some people are going to not like like he's going to speak his mind and i think he articulates himself incredibly well and he's very very intelligent person and so these are the type of people i love to have these third right, rail let's topics get with. a little bit deeper i like to talk to somebody who i think is really intelligent well read has a great perspective on things like these are the conversations and the subjects that I don't want to just I don't want to debate or argue just some dummy about a topic about this like I want to have this conversation with someone who I respect as another intelligent human being and that may not totally agree with me and so we can have these discussions mm -hmm. so hopefully those of you that are not triggered by the word God right. if you're you looking know, for like neural hacks or like stuff like, it's probably not the episode that even though we did for. like Sal said we, we did bring that up yeah I mean yeah. if you want to know deep about the whole stem cell injections into his dick we went deep into that we went deep into the coffee <laughs> Dude. Enema, I, which I know Sal is Maybe. already getting his rig set up so he can shove a tube of his ass. So that's mm -hmm. that's <laughs> it all. It really got him excited. You should have seen him. You guys I might as well put coffee in there since it's in there anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but we talk Let about the brown the, flow, the you science I mean? about that because I've always wondered like why coffee. Very, why I was, the yeah, I'm of teasing choice? Sal, but I perked yeah. up just as much. I was very interested in why you would do something like that. Oh yeah. And so I don't know. Next time my tummy hurts, yeah. maybe he can get me to maybe, do maybe it. Maybe we'll stick some <laughs> shit in her ass. Now Greenfield's yeah. got a supplement company now that's. Pretty high. It's high quality stuff. My girlfriend actually uses the, the the face serum and she loves it. And knowing Ben, Ben doesn't fool around. So if he's going to put something out, it's going to be high quality. Mm -hmm. The website for his supplements is Get Keon. Uh, so that's Get G E T Keon K I O N dot com. So you can check out his his products. He of course hosts the extremely popular and been around for a long time podcast, the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Now, I do also want to say this. We are getting close to summer, which means a lot of you are probably trying to get leaner. Now, we have two nutrition-based guides that can help you. One is the Intuitive Nutrition Guide that teaches you the steps you need to take to get you to a point where you can eat intuitively. And we also have an Intermittent Fasting Guide that teaches you how to utilize fasting the right way. Now, we're giving both of those away for free this month if you enroll in any of our MAPS 
bundles where we take multiple maps programs, we combine them together for a particular goal, and we discount them by about 30% off. So if you get a bundle, you will get both the intuitive guide and the fasting guide for free. You can find all of that at mindpumpmedia.com. And without any further ado, here we are talking to our good friend, Ben Greenfield. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Got me so fast. <laughs> you guys, if you guys heard Angelo beatbox, no. did you guys meet Angelo? The, no. uh, the he's the COO for for Keon, and he is the best beatboxer. Oh wait, I'll no, maybe he did. You, I think you did introduce us to oh, him, dude. Is a, you probably met him over at the expo. He's amazing, dude. Beatboxer. Like the best beatboxer cut a jam. I've ever heard. I've got videos somewhere. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's an interesting impressive. skill. Hey, so tell me right now because I know the last couple times we talked, I know you you've been transitioning over to the new logo, the new brand. I see new people on your team. Like, what's your what's your team shaping up like right now? What do you got going on? A lot. Yeah, but you're first, building an army. Oh, first. Before we close the loop on beatboxing, <laughs> <laughs> let's keep it in, man. Yeah. <laughs> he taught me how to how to learn beatboxing. And you say the word boots, then cats. Have you guys heard of this? Oh, yeah. Boots, cats, yeah. boots, cats. Boots and cats and 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 boots <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, the company's coming. Kind of, this is our first time to, to put on some big boy pants and do a do an expo, do a, a conference. What's, so, the, what's that look like? What's, what's the prep look like for that? I don't know. I just told people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's all going to write the team for that shit. Show up and write some ah. some stupidly big check for fake grass outside of a booth. Are they <laughs> a plastic plant? <laughs> so what it is? Uh, oh man, is it typically like expensive to run? And then do do people typically get a good return from it? Because I feel like so you know. Mm, yeah, exactly. So it's like brand awareness. You, right? you show up. It, it depends. So we wanted our booth to be an experience where. You could go and sit and read some coffee table books and get some deep tissue work done and hang out and do. Oh shit, that was all yours, Ben. Yeah, that whole section where people are just like lounging and sitting. That was all kind of our section. Oh, wow. so and that's what I told them. I, I'm like, I don't want to just be like handing out little chunks of protein bars and miniature Dixie cups of coffee mm-hmm. to people as they walk by because that that's not an experience for people. I want people to have an experience. So. My initial idea was we'd have like all these little like lounging chambers. You could crawl inside and put some headphones on and just hibernate and relax. Like have it be the place where you could go and relax. Mm. But either way, it, it yeah that that was that was our goal. And I think that's a good idea when you go to expo or conferences. You need to you need to stand out and have some kind of experience. But it, it um it went well. We launched our coffee, uh, and it's the it's a, it's a very pure antioxidant rich coffee. Did you guys try it? I did. It was, it was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually very good. Yes, yeah, it's almost as good as the elephant shit coffee or the weasel poop coffee. Weasel poop. I thought I it was monkey poop. I've had no, the, no. It's the a weasel. Mo- the mongoose poop. That's yeah. a, yes. It's a, mm, well, it's from mm, Bali, mm, and it's yes. like it's literally like it I have some ferments in the digestive tract. Yes, they of the pick weasel. Out, they, or the elephant. The elephant one is right. black ivory coffee. Well, so the the I, the theory behind that is that the the weasels go around and they know to pick the the. The ripest, perfect berries, like right at mm, time, right? They have yeah. the ability to do that. So they yeah. eat them and then they shit them out and then they make the coffee. And, and this stuff happens. It's not just the beans that I they select. I want to see the promo video for this. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not just like the selection <laughs> process. It's the fermentation process, oh, the that, change in alkalinity. Oh, that I didn't know. Yes, yes. I thought it was just because they were picking the best ones. No, then, that's a lazy way to do it. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Think about that, though. Yeah. If you got a, you got an animal that's out there, they're gonna. there's more likely their, their senses are a, a sure, lot more sure. heightened than our, just our vision, right? So they're going to yeah. be able to get the best one. So I just oh, assume that that was the Fermentation. It's like Wonder Bread versus sourdough bread. Oh, right? Wow. I mean, that's sound you logic. Get a, you get a nice yeah. sourdough once it comes yeah. out the Weenel's anus. Yeah. So, yeah. Weenel. Ooh. Wait, we, we, Weasel. That's a tongue twister. Next that's another sour. beatboxer. Weasel anus. Weasel anus. Weasel anus. Weasel anus. Weasel anus. Weasel anus. We can't even do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to add that into Whoa. the boots, boots and cats. Yeah. And um, then the elephant that's one. like level the, five. The elephant one, I think yeah. you can get that one on Amazon, the black ivory coffee. No, I've never heard of that. Now, what's that, that one? It's the same concept, except it's a big ass elephant. And I don't know if it picks Way more expensive because there's a lot 
more shit, you got to clean yes, off. Yes, you got to dip for a lot of shit with the elephant. Yeah. Yeah. That one's Love's black on. ivory coffee. Actually, I talked about that on a podcast once, and the distributor emailed me, and he's like, I want to send you some coffee. And I never heard back, but I was very excited for a short period of time. <laughs> for a short period of time, it just died. Right yeah, so we, so we launched our coffee, and people seemed to like it, and we were supposed to be launching a bar. I, I've, I've been designing a new, a new like a clean food Bar different the from the one that we've had. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Changed up all the ingredients. Now opening. I like that bar. I though. might get in trouble for saying this, but we had to discontinue that bar because a couple of people actually uh, got like a, a tooth damage from the processing because some of the cacao nibs were very large and almost like the <laughs> texture. Oh, Someone down broke their rocks. teeth. Uh oh. <laughs> yes, and and so we had to recall all the bars and redo the whole cacao oh, nib process. Shit. Shut the and then, fuck up, dude! Uh, we we're supposed what to have headache. these these bars ready for this mm-hmm. next uh, for for Paleo FX. We're supposed to get bars in their bags and hand out little bars to you know have with your coffee. And they uh, the manufacturer messed up. He had quinoa instead of kaniwa. <laughs> this is what I was starting to tell you guys. <laughs> no, wait, wait. So what's the difference? What is kaniwa? And well, that's close I'm enough. Glad, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, so. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so they're very similar. They're very similar in terms of, you know, like quinoa is like a super grass. It's high in amino yeah. acids and minerals and, and uh, fatty acids. Hippies like omega-3s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, quinoa. But kaniwa, it's in, the, it's in the quinoa family, but it's also called baby baby quinoa and it's it's a smaller and also more antioxidant rich version of quinoa because and if you look at it it's just darker in color it's like a tiny little blueberry versus a big fat blueberry the tiny blueberry is technically a different mouthfeel different texture more antioxidants mm. and uh, it's a crunchy mouthfeel it's like a crunchy like a rice crispy mouthfeel and that's the mouthfeel that I tested on all the bars and that's the one I wanted and then they finished up and they had quinoa because some idiot doesn't know the difference between Connie. <laughs> so when did you did you know right away when you bit into it? Or so, like, bitch. Yeah, yeah. So so we had to. No, I didn't even bite into it. We looked at all the label. I'm going through all, all the ingredients and the final packaging list uh, and everything. It says quinoa. I'm like, wait a minute. So, uh, so how yeah. many did they did they make yeah. like that? I don't know. I think it was like a twenty five, thirty thousand dollar mistake. Oh, oh, but they don't charge you, obviously. Any, they fucked any, up. In the supplement industry, if the mm. if the manufacturer basically doesn't doesn't do the right thing, then they eat the cost. Yeah, they get it. Okay, good. Yeah. What are you gonna do with all those bars? Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, Sling them, man. 50% yeah. off. Shoot them out of a cannon <laughs> next time at a Children expo. in Ethiopia can go yeah. break their teeth on the <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> into What is this? This is not Kaniwa. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> the shit you have given me. Quinoa. <laughs> Terrible. So how many... Uh, Quinoa, it's so 90s. You had three or four then stations, right? Or how many How many booth spots did you have to rent out for Just all one. That's just w- one. That's just yeah. one. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought when I saw someone with that big of a, a section like that, that'd be like. Oh, yeah. It was one booth, but it was whatever their big ass option is, right? Like oh, you okay. Get, you can get a, a small or medium or big ass. What, what's the difference yeah, in pricing for the, the all ass. the levels? Do you know? I don't, I don't know. Of course you don't. You're the yeah. worst, dude. I, I don't you know, know, you're the worst CEO. You guys, you guys the worst have texted CEO me that I interviewed and to ask about money. About like <laughs> analytics. Somebody, what? one of you guys I should know better by now all the times we hung out. I do. Yeah. I, I, I have realized that you have to outsource a lot and stick to your best purpose in life. Yeah, and for me, it's it's writing articles and it's speaking and it's podcasting and it's doing some of the visionary work like like Connie Wah versus Quinoa, you know, and and going out and doing things like that. But for for me, I just I I have the numbers and I have the analytics. I have access to all that's on my phone, but I just don't. I, I don't have the time. No, it makes I don't sense. Have the time. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I, and yeah. I should know by now all the times we've hung out every time I've asked you. Yeah, every time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how we many people those, listen to the, huh? to the podcast. Oh. Now, what I do sometimes do is I go to the iTunes store and I see what our ranking is. Okay. Right? And, and so I could tell you our, our ranking. I right. Know, I know that we're. Which that top. shit's weird. That's always right. a yeah, I don't yeah, know what yeah, goes Yeah, hold on a second. I need to ask you a serious question. Who are you guys uh, uh, paying at iTunes? You're in the, in the, in the what's hot section. Permanently, that thing doesn't <laughs> fucking change. I noticed There's something that weird. <laughs> Something's like, going on here. Yeah. Let me you know. are so hot. In it's fuego. like if you were to drive by McDonald's every yeah. day for like two decades, and every day on their little board is like new the Big Mac. <laughs> yeah. it's like, no, it's not hot anymore. It's, it's been around a while. Actually, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. you're lava hot. Yeah. Like nine yeah, years. Yeah, no, <laughs> secret sauce. We discovered that Shit. back in the late eighties. Um, <laughs> Would that be funny if McDonald's tried to remarket like that? That'd right. be great. Right. New the 
yeah. Big Mac. The <laughs> year of our fries. So from what I can understand, because I, I kind of look, and there were a couple others, like um, Rob Wolf, the Paleo yeah, Solution, yeah, yeah. and then Dave Asprey's Bulletproof Radio. They're just permanently there. They're permanently there. And I think it's because when I first started podcasting, there was like there was Rob Wolf was there and I was there. I think <laughs> about a year or two later, Dave's appeared. But this was a long time ago. This was like I think like nine or ten years ago. Yeah. So I think part of it is just seniority. I think it's just being around for a long enough time keeps you in that what's hot category. I don't know. I feel like they it's I, a, I feel like there's a person manually putting them in and just they just don't pay attention. They just left it there. I don't know. If it ever <clears throat> disappears, I'm screwed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I think, yeah. I think, I think my, we, my entire podcasting business hinges upon this mysterious <laughs> Apple What's Hot category. <laughs> I think they don't give a shit. That's what I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just for they Apple. set it up and we're like, ah, that's yeah. kinda how I feel. I gotta yeah. wonder who like maybe one person in a cubicle at Apple running the entire Apple. Totally. I what think they, so. Well, it's called the Apple Podcast, right? And and their their app sucks. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's terrible. Like everything about it just kind of blows. But I, it's still like eighty percent. Hey, there's a stat for you that I made up. Eighty <laughs> percent or something, <laughs> something like that of Unreliable. the podcast come from iTunes. Download, come from iTunes. Yeah. I actually think I, that's that's a somewhat accurate number because I do listen to a podcast about podcasting. <laughs> I listen to the Libsyn podcast oh, yeah. because, oh, I, right. because I host my podcast with Libsyn. So do we. And they often will give you little tips during that, like about being a good podcaster. So I listen oh, to that one. But cool. at the very end of that show, they go over stats. Like here's what a normal number of downloads is. Here's where most of the downloads are coming from. Spotify versus um, Apple Podcasting versus what else is there out yeah. there? Oh, uh, Stitcher. Podcast yeah. Republic. Stitcher. Yeah, there's tons. Yeah. So that's, that's something that they said was it's still like the lion's share of all the podcasts. Now, I think that's going to change though. I see what's yeah. happening. I see what the moves that Spotify is making and like how user friendly it is search. I think just podcasting hasn't made its way to being cool on Spotify yet, but I think Mm -hmm. the other platforms do a better job. So it's going to, it'll be interesting to see how that flips things and starts to show a lot more money in it. Now you're seeing a lot of sponsors getting into podcasting just over the last three years, we've seen a huge change and increase. So now that the money's starting to come in, they're going to start to pay attention. Now for me, I, I only ever use the iTunes app because I, when I listen to a podcast, I listen to it when I'm working out. And I never work out with my phone. I have this old school uh, uh, Apple iPod Shuffle, oh, and I yeah. buy these on Amazon. They're I have a, those they're, still. they're waterproofed iPod shuffles. There's no you guys know how I'm not big into Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and having too many signals around. So it's right. just super plain Jane. There's no Bluetooth. There's no Wi-Fi. There's also no podcasting app. Unfortunately, there's no speed up button. There's no slow down button. It's just you plug it into iTunes. You put all your podcasts. Why would you just on get it, a fucking cassette play. player? I because because this is smaller. It's small. I can I can. I can spearfish with it. Oh, I can man, take cool. a cold shower with it. I can work out with it. But you know, uh, I, I beat them. I bring them to hell and back, and then I just buy a new one. They're probably hella cheap right yeah. now. Well, they're uh, they're they're it's like, like novelty. A, they're, now, they're around right? like a hundred bucks, something oh, like so that. Well, it's a waterproof. So they're not one. super cheap, but they're waterproof. They have a good uh, damage policy. So typically about. You know, eight out of ten of the ones that I buy, I can usually get like a damaged kind of Amazon refund on. But that's what I like for the past decade. That's the only way I've ever consumed audiobooks and podcasts and oh, anything shit. like that. And I've I have used my app on my phone a few times just to see what apps are doing. Like try to find my podcast in the app. That's how I know the Apple podcasting app just sucks. You can't yeah. find mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. But that's so all I speed. use is this little Apple iPod shuffle. And I, I recommend, you know, a lot of people I recommend these cold showers too, right? Dude, you start and end each day with a five-minute cold shower. It's like uh, Ray Cronice's 2013 article in Wired Magazine. He got into his whole shiver system. And he actually came and spoke. I, I put on one event ever in my life, and it just almost killed me from the cortisol. But it was the Becoming Superhuman live event in Spokane, Washington. And I flew in Ray Cronice and, and um, uh, uh, Jimmy Moore and Monica Reinagel and Dave Asprey and all these folks who I was kind of like dialoguing with in the fitness and the nutrition industry. And Ray Cronice was kind of a big deal at that time because he'd written this article in Wired Magazine about the shiver system. But all he was doing with his clients to allow them to lose a a ton of weight was a five-minute cold shower, 20 seconds cold, 10 seconds hot, 10 times through in the morning, same thing in the evening. 
Oh, that's kind of different. I yeah. follow like I know Wim Hof teaches where you start the first week, you do fifteen seconds at the end, cold, mm-hmm. and then the second thirty seconds, you yeah. work your way up. Yeah, that's kind of what I follow right now. But I've never seen anyone do cycles like that. That would be yeah. kind of annoying. Ray Cronice is a fascinating guy. You guys might want to interview him sometime. He's uh, he just wrote a book. I think it's called it's either a book or a research paper called The Metabolic Winter. Very smart guy. Hmm. Very smart. Oh, that's guy. an interesting so, per- topic. Personally, for me, and I've shared this on our show before, of like all the hacks and things that like I've gotten into in the health and fitness space, the cold contrast thing has been mm-hmm. the uh, biggest, has been a game changer I, for I, sure. It's been a huge. I can tell right away after I started doing it. Uh, well, not right away. It took about a year of consistently doing it. Did I notice that? Like this, I looked back at the year and went, "Holy shit!" Like I never yeah. got sick this year. Right. And yeah. I've always been a guy who gets sick like four or five times a year. It's just common. Mm-hmm. I, and I always attribute that to one, I have a weak immune system Two, I'm always around people and planes and touching handles and shit like that. So I just thought, Oh man, I just get, mm-hmm. that's why it's not because like anything else. And then when I started yeah. doing that, like it made a huge difference. Yeah. For me, I think getting sick involves being at the back of the airplane, doing all my stretches, doing like push ups and putting my face down in the aisle of the carpet on the airplane. Yeah, I probably think that's probably the, Are you, do you really do that? Thing. <laughs> I, I, I do I like love workouts to in the too. airplane bathroom. <laughs> yeah, like the airplane is the one. That's not possible. You're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would not believe how many body weight squats you can do. That's actually my rule when I travel is every time I go to the bathroom on an airplane, I do squats. You do not. How many I'm squats saying, do you do? How so many? Like, the, how long these does are, it take? I have these little rules in my life. Like they're just spread all throughout my life. Like you got to do the cold shower. That's not weird at all. Yeah. So the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the airplane is 20 squats. No oh. international flight, whatever. I've taken a bunch of wine and weed. What it, you know, and I'm and I'm tired as hell. Uh, anytime I stand up to pee, it's twenty squats. Twenty squats, it, and and the rule is the butt's got to touch that little like miniature Japanese sized toilet seat in the airplane bathroom. <laughs> Another one is anytime I go to the bathroom at a restaurant, I do forty squats. It's just what. So I go on the stall, I do forty squats. Same thing. Butt touches the seat and back up. So it's it's kind of like a glycemic variable. You ever have anybody like, like, is everything okay in there, sir? (laughs) Well, no, because that's why I go in the stall. So you plant your feet, you know, hip width apart, and honestly, it just looks like you're taking a shit. Nobody Mm. can tell you're standing. So you keep it. Wow, you're really pushing. So is this this except for you see this six (laughs) foot three? (laughs) This head popping up and down. Oh, oh, oh! It's a little weird, dude. It's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pants up or down. uh, for the squats, yeah. pants up. Okay, okay, okay. So if someone was okay. really paying attention, the they wouldn't be able to see like the dunk. folds at the bottom by my shoes to see that my pants are okay, not okay. Uh, down. Uh, uh, shit, I'm doing squats. But I, like, is I, that a new pooping technique? Yeah, yeah I was going to get it out. Like, wow, yeah. It yeah. really moves things for me. <laughs> yeah. well, I do this a lot. I've got the hex bar deadlift outside my gym, and I, and I do five reps about every two hours. I go out there and I, I lift the hex bar. I do 30 kettlebell swings. Anytime I step over the kettlebell, it's at the base of the stairs. Dude, you're doing you're doing trigger sessions. Here's, yeah. a, here's the thing yeah. though. There's there's a lot of brilliance in that. And yep, I'll tell you what, there's a, sure. and, yeah, we're we're laughing and kind of making fun of you, but I do the same thing. Yeah. There's a lot of things in my life now, and I this is what I teach to clients. Like to me, yep. those things mm-hmm. will change your life more completely than like the next this or the next that or the best right. this. It's like what I tell people is, is unless you're an workouts. athlete, you're getting a paycheck or you have an event that you're in intense preparation for and it's something that means a lot to you exercise like at the end of the day going to the gym the, to the gym should be an option not a requirement right it should be an option because the whole day you've just stayed active right you've, yeah. mm-hmm. you've moved you've walked mm-hmm. you've changed mm-hmm. positions frequently you've whatever dropped and done 10 burpees at yep. the end of each hour or so you've done 80 burpees <laughs> by the time you leave the office you know, th- that stuff adds up yeah oh, and we, i mean that's that's our lot. that's our trigger session concept concept in our program and that frequent that that frequent stimulation of muscle fibers Results in some pretty incredible gains. You would not believe. I mean, you think twenty squats, forty squats, and you know, for a guy like Ben, that's super easy. You go try uh, oh, on a daily, uh, you know, sem- on a, throughout the day, just a few reps of something throughout the entire day. Watch how your body changes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it blows it blows people away. It blew yeah. me away when I first started doing it. Yeah, I've got I've got a conference rule. When I go to a conference, I know I'm not going to work out. I'm not going to lead a workout. I, I just I I know nothing's going to happen. And sometimes you plan for a workout, and you get to the end of the day of the conference, and people want to go have drinks at 5 p.m. and there's right. a dinner at set. Like you just don't. Yeah. You know, okay. So my rule is, I return to that cold shower concept. I do that hot, cold contrast at the beginning of the day and the end of the day, right? So, you know, if I walk into my hotel room at 11 p.m. after having been at dinner, I can still get myself into the shower, which is great for sleep too, right? Because it decreases Mm -hmm. your core temperature. And then for every hour of the entire day, 30 burpees. 
Just uh, duck away all- anywhere. Go outside, go in the bathroom, go in it, you know, stairwell, whatever, 30 burpees. So on any like super duper busy day, hot, cold contrast shower, beginning of the day, end of the day, then 30 burpees yeah. every hour. The other, the other benefit to this that I notice is when you do that every hour type of activity, because I've done that as well, not quite as intense as 30 burpees, but you get this uh, almost neurotropic effect, uh, mm-hmm. you know, where you feel like you can think sharper and faster. You're more awake. It's better than any kind of cup of coffee I've ever had. Yeah. Except Keon coffee. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything you do to like counter stuff that you know isn't like serving your body ideally? Like if you were to drink oh, all night long, is there something you do to counter that? Yeah, that's a or good question. Like I, for I, what I do, like if we go out to a restaurant and eating out, I'm not uh-huh. making my own food. 100% every time Katrina and I will walk for 45 minutes to yes. an hour right afterwards. Yeah. The, and and so the research that they've done on controlling uh, postprandial blood glucose swings is that it is indeed after, not before, that you reap most of the benefits of movement. So, a, a, so a, after a, work. So, that's third, a good, so I'm on to the right track. Walk. It's a good strategy. I, I have the same rule. You must at least stroll for so, And sometimes yeah. it's just five minutes. That's all you have time for. But a postprandial stroll, it's pretty shocking the effect that has on glycemic variability. Uh, in, in, I believe I saw a huge state. difference when I started implementing now, that. Now, prior, it's actually also quite shocking the the extent to which you actually need to work out or, or the um, the very short period of time that you need to work out to actually notice a pretty significant increase in insulin sensitivity when you're eating a meal. Mm. So pre-meal, especially pre-big meal or cheat meal or carbohydrate-intensive meal, as little as 30 seconds of explosive training actually increases your insulin sensitivity. So you can literally just drop and do 15 burpees as Mm. fast as you can. Now, in an ideal scenario, you would do strength training, right? You're, you're emptying muscle glycogen levels, sure. or maybe tapping into liver glycogen levels so that if you're going to drink alcohol, some of that fructose is actually just used to replenish liver glycogen and doesn't even spill out into the bloodstream as triglycerides. You, you know, so, so for me, one thing is, is a good strength training session. And it could even be just like you, know, an old school bodybuilding esque session where your real goal is just to decrease muscle glycogen. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. You're just turning on. You're just turning on the switches to to change the way your body. Turning on the glute four transporter. So ideal scenario movement wise is explosive training, <laughs> resistance training prior, and then like like aerobic exercise in that post brain. You know, I always find there's so much wisdom in, in uh, old cultures because if you look at all like the major old cultures of the world, they all have some form of an activity post post uh, meal. So like. You know, uh, Japanese cultures, Chinese cultures, uh, Mediterranean cultures. After a meal, you typically go out for a walk with the family, and it's just something you do as part of the. It's actually part of the meal, and it's it's funny how they've done that for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modern modern paleo enthusiasts, they go to the freezer and they get out their their fat bomb, and they eat their their paleo fat bomb with the coconut milk and the coconut flakes. And the, now, what does that do? They post- put these months. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, I was going to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, that's not adding up so right for me. Didn't you know that the ketogenic paleo diet doesn't have any calories in it? So that's all you need to do is just get up and have your post meal fat bomb. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. like it's like uh, you know, I, I, a lot of that stuff in paleo FX was pretty tasty. Yeah, but I didn't eat a lot this year. Did you guys uh, eat that much this yeah. year? You know, I like taking the supplements that you're supposed to feel no. for fun. So I did a lot of that. Um, but I saw a lot of CBD this year. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of CBD. A lot of CBD. Yes. You know, but here's what I did find about CBD. Not The ones I saw, at least, were not dosed in the, in the doses that people typically will get. Like the benefit from, so they're like at, you know one milligram or two milligram. A lot of a lot of DHA and added oil. Yeah, yeah. Hemp, all coming actual, from hemp oil. <laughs> not a lot of actual active ingredient. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know it's 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 expensive. CBD is expensive. There, there must why. have what were there six or seven different CBD. Yep. Oh, at least we had yeah. a relatively small expo, right? So CBD appears to be one of the new, <laughs> the new trends, trend. which surprises me because I was in the CBD industry. And payment processors shut you down right and left, and you got to change URLs. And and pe- you know Facebook ads will ban you mm-hmm. if you, a business that's doing CBD is associated with any other business. So you got to have a full separate corporation. I mean, it's a it's a pain oh, in the wow. butt to be in that. Which business. one of you mentioned this morning about uh, the whole all the YouTube pulling down all the nootropic videos? Oh, I did. Yeah, see. I saw that. Uh, Someone tweeted me about that. Okay. What's up with that? I have no idea. I just saw that a few channels had experienced like. A, all of their videos being pulled down with anything related to nootropics. Have you guys ever had one of your videos pulled down? Not we yet. actually haven't yet. I, have that's, we, have that's surprising. I got I got one some... pulled down. It was I I did a how to give yourself an IV video where I kind of put my arm out in front of the camera and I it was just me. I I propped up my phone and I did the IV 
into the cubital vein. You can't on show an in, in Is it just because yeah, somebody they, flagged they took it down it after about a month? I'm guessing somebody, you know, they said, oh, he's not a doctor. Mm. He's, I don't know. Uh, I had, maybe I had poor technique, yeah. which I probably do. <laughs> Speaking of videos, I want to ask you about the coffee enema that you Please, put on Instagram. Yes. Yeah, Please, talk <laughs> about this. Fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. I love you, bro. You know, I, mean, the, I fucking love you sometimes. You go all out, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. All in. Yeah, all in. What, exactly. about, what about it? It's not rocket science. You put coffee in your butt. Hold it in there. Like, you explain oh, that you to put, you put it out there. So let's like, first talk about why we would put coffee in our okay. ass. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, we yes. can talk about... <laughs> is it because it's already brown? Like, what is the, right. what's the deal with it? <laughs> Does it taste okay. better there? <laughs> oh, it's, it's like right. the coffee beans. Right. Oh. That's exactly it, Sal. It's because What happens when you fart? You know what I mean? Like, I want to know all this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> it's all about color coordination. That's why you don't do it with Tapo Chico or kombucha. It's got to be coffee. Well, you know, it almost returns back to Adam's question about alcohol or party mitigation strategies. Part of it is related to that, which I'll explain in a moment. Oh, interesting. But I also, by the way, to close that loop, before I go out to to an event where I think I might be drinking or, or I might be eating a lot of, of suspect food or whatever, so, I, so that I remember, I place four activated charcoal capsules mm-hmm. next to my bed stand. That's, 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 I was doing this. Like, sounds that, like daddy too. comes around when yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everyone gets like, the charcoal. Thanks, man. That it makes a help. big difference. Oh, it I, helped us. I always have minerals in my back pocket, like these little fizzy <laughs> mineral tablets that you can drop in, in the in the water as like an electrolyte tablet. Mm-hmm. So you do the charcoal, uh, the minerals, and then glutathione. And glutathione is usually I've the morning after, like mm-hmm. some kind of like sublingual glutathione. I also have glutathione intramuscular injections at home where you just draw it into a needle and of course you just you do. In, inject glutathione <laughs> yes. in, into your butt cheek. And that's a, it's actually a really good way to absorb glutathione. And then I have glutathione IVs. So I do two glutathione IVs each week. And that's not because I drink to excess twice a week. It's because I actually have the gene that causes you to not make that much superoxide dismutase, oh, which interesting. is an antioxidant that enhances your glutathione production. So for me, it's almost like- a, You're supplementing for your it, needs. It, it's like a, a hack that is that is specific to my genetic mm-hmm. predisposition mm. to, to not make a lot of glutathione. God, and so, so the, the coffee enema, one of the main things that that does is it causes an increase in bile production by the gallbladder, and it also increases glutathione and antioxidant uh, not not production uh, activity in the liver. Now, why does coffee so, do that? Is it because yeah. of the caffeine that goes gets absorbed rectally? It's the caffeine. <laughs> it's the antioxidants. It's the peristaltic effect on on the especially the lower GI tracts okay. when you've got all that in your system. Fluid, there's almost yeah. a little bit of a constriction and dilation response that happens. And what you do is you you have this. Uh, I'll I'll tell you exactly how I do it. You make your coffee. Use a really good pure coffee. Can like, you use espresso? Like, like, like your brand, maybe? <laughs> I, was say I like that. a good <laughs> brand. Yes. Like good- okay. yes. Uh, can, can you that's spr- the only reason I wanted a pure coffee for my brand, is <laughs> to put it in my can, butt so in a more guilt free. I'm Italian. Can, can you do like Frappuccino? Can, can I use espresso or, or does it have to be yeah. like American coffee? You could probably use espresso, even though it has less caffeine, so you get less of that effect. Yeah. And by the just way, a shot. There, there, I just there want is a company called Glidamins that makes like a coffee enema suppository. If you want to kind of start small and work your way up. <laughs> and it has all the stuff that activates bile pussy. production. Yeah, yeah. You don't get the peristalsis. Yeah. You don't get that feeling of being squeaky, squeaky, squeaky clean afterwards. But it still it causes that. Can that you actually? Bile does production. it make you feel that way? Oh my goodness! You just really? feel you feel amazing. You feel just. Oh super. god! You're, gonna, I, you're I, convincing Sal right there's, now. There's one. Yeah. There's one guy I know who's he's he's, 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 a, he's a former bodybuilder. Uh, Chris, um, I'm blanking on his name. It starts with a, a Z. Anyways, he does a coffee enema every morning. He and his wife, both both uh, big fitness bodybuilders. Yeah, they do a coffee enema every single morning. Maybe it's because the, you know maybe it's mean? to reverse the damage from all the whey protein bars and shakes and, <laughs> and the, uh, yeah. you know, all the other constipating uh, nutrients that a bodybuilder consumes. But anyways, you uh, you get a stainless steel bucket and you make yourself coffee and. You, Obviously, you don't. You want to make it with a method that doesn't have a lot of ground. So French press would be <laughs> far inferior. You were all like grainy a, in there. Yeah, yeah, use like a yeah. paper filter. Sure. And then you uh, you make sure you cool it to room temperature so you don't get ass burns. <laughs> made, made that mistake. It's like, well, it's like when you sip coffee and it's too hot, you can just kind of spit it out. Don't put it in your ass. Uh, a- maybe put an ice cube in your mouth. If you shoot coffee up your butt, that's too hot. You can't just like spit it out or stick an ice cube up there like it just burns so check the temperature 
you can you can just yeah. put your put your you know wash your hands first, put your finger in there and you know, check the temperature. Mm-hmm. And then these stainless steel enema buckets, you just kind of put them up on the counter in your bathroom. They have a tube that comes out of them, and you smear the end of the tube with a little bit of coconut oil, and you just lay there and you you put about a quart of coffee into your backside, then you roll over onto your right side. And you lay there for like 15 or 20 minutes. And for me, I'm usually, whatever, you know, talking on my phone or <laughs> now, I saw on Instagram. Hey, Ben, what are you doing right <laughs> now? <laughs> chatting. And, no. then, uh, and then you just go and, and you let it all out. You and then you go to the bathroom. You just go to the bathroom and everything comes out and you feel freaking amazing. Now, I, does does it do, – do you absorb – do you get the caffeine? Do I was just going to say, do you get a super rush like from- you, you definitely – I mean, obviously, they deliver medicines, you know, anally because of the, the huge amount of, of vascularization Direct, yeah. and capillaries down there. So, yeah, absolutely. Direct to the bloodstream. Yeah. Do you have to be careful because yeah. uh, you might take too much caffeine that way or it might hit you faster? In other words, if you're sensitive to caffeine – like you have to like be careful with how yeah. much you. Like, I would imagine. I mean, I I've been drinking coffee for so long. Yeah, you're I think immune. My tolerance is pretty high. Yeah. But I could see if you if you weren't a coffee drinker and needed a coffee enema, you'd probably be pretty wired for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, know. you know what? If you're not a coffee drinker, start with your mouth first. <laughs> yeah, start <laughs> start with the mouth. Yeah, exactly. Don't go ass first. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Enemas are interesting. Like a lot a lot of cultures have a, have a pretty big history. Everything from like yogurt and probiotic enemas to to water enemas. Now, to you, that's a good topic. Enemas. What other Things have you put in your butt yeah. like enema style? <laughs> no, seriously, I want to know like to toy thing. cars. Yeah, let's go to the uh, uh, coffee. Obviously, I've done I've done a probiotic enema. Okay. So so uh, basically, you you ferment probiotics in coconut water on the counter. You can add butyric acid capsules to it as well to increase. You know, because when you eat a lot of fiber, you eat a lot of butyric acid in your colon. It ferments. You produce a lot of beneficial short chain fatty acids that help with everything from sleep to neurotransmitters. So so it's kind of a cool way to populate mm-hmm. the large intestine. Uh, but but butyric acid, probiotics, and coconut water. You let it sit, ferment for about forty eight hours on your kitchen counter. Keep it at room temp, and then that would be an example of an enema. And that would be one you keep in for a longer period of time. Like you would literally like hang from an inversion table or a yoga swing or anything else where you wanted to to really have it um, let it sit. It'd be like populating your gut, mm-hmm. right? This would be in a situation where you had poor gut flora or a bacterial <clears throat> imbalance, or you'd been on antibiotics and you need to repopulate the gut. What happens flora. if you sneeze? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah. So, uh, what did you? What were effects from that? What did you feel from doing that? Did you notice anything? Just better GI function. Okay. Less GI distress. That was after a period of time where I'd been on antibiotics for MRSA. Oh. Uh, which, if I had to go back, I probably wouldn't do antibiotics. I'd take more of like the oregano, thieves essential oil type of route. Mm. But I was on antibiotics, so I wanted to repopulate my system. So you can, of course, take probiotics, but a lot of them don't survive the digestive tract. Right intact and so going mm. going take the at shortcut it, at it from both ends have you is, tried alcohol uh, yet i've heard of that's i haven't big... tried out i've done thc oh thc it's... suppositories oh, wow. and the reasoning yeah. behind that was there's a company in washington called botanica and they make booty uh, tanica they make something they make a lubricant called bond and it's a thc sex lube and and it works very well and you like get almost, almost like a localized crotch high and <laughs> so i thought well My could you do the same thing <laughs> with with one of these like, like you know like they make those thc capsules that have the coconut oil yeah, 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 yeah. it's just coconut oil and thc it's not like you're shoving a bunch of fd and c blue and, right, and right. preservatives up your backside so i tried this and you really do you get a localized high for your crotch that would be like like a pre-sex type of strategy to do like a, a thc suppository so for all for all, all these guys I'm in that, on that idea for all these young guys that are the two pump chumps this is a great strategy for you right here yeah there nope. you go <laughs> so i've done the coffee enema i've done the probiotic i've done those glidamins i told you about and i've done the thc thing uh, and, and the buck stops there, except I have a couple of times actually gotten pelvic floor therapy. Oh, the therapist wow. actually goes in through your through your uh, your your butthole and kind of reaches up inside and gets like the perineum and all those areas that tend to get super duper tight. It's just something more commonly done for women, but you can actually get like a like a pelvic floor therapy. Do you know what the okay. difference is, like kind of percentage wise? If I were to consume that pill versus taking it rectally is it what's the like how much more does it get digested you're, you're, or in you're your closing closer? at them right now you mean yeah, the yeah. thc one any of them i mean is that's what i've i've just heard that like that's why alcohol hits you so it's hard more rapid and complete when you go through your butt it is but yeah. you know about, about how just, much it's just like a subling i have no clue on percentages well you yeah. should you got to know some because if I it's know. like the difference of 40 and 42 like you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> it's like you're shoving up your ass well, for two no, percent uh <laughs> you mean for the thc yeah, any anything. of anything. For that, it's anything. more just like, like the much? fact that, that you get a localized high. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, but what about the other stuff? I mean, why not? Why not take it? Like, because I would imagine all the things that you were explaining, even with the coffee enema, I, I would think even when you drink it normally, you still get a lot of those, but or some of those, no, but none you of don't. them. Oh, you, really? No, you you don't get anywhere near the amount of peristal. Like, you just have to try it. See what I mean? Like, you can drink a cup of coffee and kind of feel like it helps you go to the bathroom in the morning. If you do a coffee enema, like it freaking just cleans <laughs> you out. Like. It, you feel squeaky clean from your freaking like esophagus all the way all the way down through so, your large intestine. So then, as soon as you mm. pull the tube out, are you like rushing to the toilet? No, no, no. you gotta roll over your side. No, and let you it pull sit. the tube out and you just kind of let it sit. And when you first do it, Clench you kind of do feel like, oh, I need to go. Yeah. And you kind of ignore that. And after about two minutes, that sensation goes away. And then you just lay there for a while. And do you do this on the floor of like your shower? Just in I case just, you get I a little... just lay on the floor of my bathroom on okay. my right side. So yeah. I got a question for you because you do a lot of you try a lot of things on yourself. Like your wife, does, has there ever been a time when your wife was like, uh, I don't think you should inject on, that ben. into your balls? Yeah. Or you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She's she's gotten concerned a few times with <laughs> things things that I've done. Um, let me think of an example where I uh, where I concerned her. Um, because I get I get a lot of just like fringe supplements and powders and stuff sent sent to my home. You know, I'd, she's, she's got to get the, scared. She was on board bad. with your whole uh, sticking needles in your dick thing and you know trying to optimize that. She was a little concerned <laughs> when I came back from the physician and my dick looked like it got run over by a semi truck. Right? Oh shit! So was it, it like, she has to was be it black and mangling blue the and like purple for real? Like yeah. Oh yeah. It, Jesus! It, and I was a little bit concerned too. I'm like, dude, I'm. <laughs> I should, I should hope naturally so, damage, yeah. <laughs> and and I I called the the stem cell therapist or not the therapist like like the person who who actually is is well versed in stem cell injections into your dick and they said that was normal anytime you inject anything it's going to get black and blue and purple and the needles just cause a little bit of capillarization and was it worth it flow I think so yeah yeah right. yeah. Um, you got the, a lot of traction from that, right? That, I did. That got you, did the that get you on uh, was, Joe Rogan? Uh, I remember. No. Well, yeah, like well, a little bit later oh, than shoot, that, right? We haven't really talked in yeah. person since well, that. What was that experience like? I know. I want well, to know. Two things. First of all, the, you know, I, I did the stem cell injections into my dick because Men's Health Magazine had me do a whole bunch of stuff. They had me do like Ayurvedic practices, like learning reverse orgasm and not ejaculating for a month and a half. They had me doing like Whoa. gas what? station dick pills, which turned out to be like Sildenafil and Ephedra and, and not all the all the the crazy fringe. Unique, so it's actually rare, Viagra and Ephedra. Chinese herbs. You yeah. went a month yeah, and a half Viagra without and orgasm? And yeah. Uh, well, no, I didn't go a month and a half without orgasm. Okay. I went a month and a half with the no ejaculation technique, which doesn't what mean does that you're not like? orgasm. Okay. If, well, you, teach if, that if you learn, well, it, it, it's called the draw. If you learn, you, you can like, as you're about to orgasm, you reach down, you place a lot of pressure on your perineum and you breathe. You have to practice this breath work beforehand. The book, The Multi-Orgasmic Male is a really good book to teach. Okay, wait, so this. wait, 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 and you, and you, wait, 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 wait. You draw it back in and you still orgasm, but you don't actually But you ejaculate. push up so you prevent it from right, coming out. Right, And you still, I mean, don't Where get me wrong. Where does it go? Like, it's still kind of, kind of. <laughs> That's uh, what I want to know. <laughs> it comes out your nose. <laughs> so you you like blow your, your nose eyes. to clean X. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Uh, you you do have a great deal of energy afterwards, but it's Gosh. almost it's almost like a frustrating energy. Like you, <laughs> almost. You're like, you're in, in we used to call that blue it's balls like, when we were in high school. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> Forcibly giving yourself blue it's balls. Like that I, feeling of taking I, know, a, I know what that feels that like. That feeling of taking it like sucks. a pre-workout <laughs> supplement, but then not getting a chance to hit the gym and work out. So you're yeah. sitting at your desk just like shaking. It's like that. Um, uh, only you so, would chase that feeling. Yeah. You know what I'm Hold saying? On, like, he's, he's teaching it. So I know. I'm sorry. I know. Only this asshole would want to do it over gonna, here. As soon as we're done with the podcast, <laughs> you, he's so do you it. block you it. Do it you, stops everything you, you from coming. You press out. with two fingers in the perineum between right. your asshole and I know your where dick. That is. And, yeah. yeah, okay, no, he's familiar. Sure. Appreciate it. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure Sal knows where to put the coffee enema tube. And then, um, and then you, the draw is basically this process of taking air and imagine your, your breath and imagining it traveling up your front side over your head and then back over your backside, just basically drawing the energy they call it like the jing or the chi mm -hmm. energy out of that area up through your body. So you're basically recirculating the energy, which sounds kind of woo. But when you concentrate on it, what, what happens is you feel as though you're pulling the, all that energy out of your crotch and up into the rest of your body. And it hits your brain, and you still orgasm. So it's it's actually a very interesting feeling, but you don't actually ejaculate, and it's not as strong as an orgasm as you would get 
if you're actually ejaculating. So now, when you do this for because you're, I know, and you're pressing on the perineum, you're you're blocking the, the the ability of the ejaculate from coming out, and so it's still in your system. And you you're, do you're, for a get, you're getting, you're definitely getting it before it kind of like goes into the vast deferens and and before it's like a full on ejaculate. So this is right before orgasm. This is right before. So, yeah. And then uh, if and you do this for a month and a half, right. when you finally like open the floodgates, pull out method. <laughs> right. When you finally open the floodgates, right. That's uh, it, it's that's definitely, interesting. It's definitely a condom filling strategy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the floodgates. Anyway, so having this so, knowledge so, now, you must so, think that these porn stars kind of were onto this probably a long time. Like we probably uh, yeah. practiced some of these yeah. techniques. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, you know, there's there's all sorts of techniques. I have another friend technique. named uh, yeah. Jordan Gray. He's like a relationship therapist and a sex coach, and he has all these techniques. Where I've, I've been, he's in a he's in like a mastermind group with me. So we've talked before at, at functions that we've been at, and he's taught me how to do like the wet towel technique, where you get a boner and you hang the wet towel on your boner and you just practice with it with a bigger and bigger towel. Some cock pushups. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got all, all these all I used these to do different that when I was strategies. All the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, one that's that's very common is is you'll just you know. Know, masturbate and then stop and then masturbate and then stop and get yourself to the point where you yeah. can just it's the only know, way get to do very it. very close yeah, to the edge. Honest. Yeah, there's a lot of strategies that in that book that that multi orgasmic male book is probably one of the better yeah. ones to learn some of those techniques. But anyway, so Men's Health Magazine had me try that mm-hmm. the the dick pills the uh, they had me do like a platelet rich plasma injection. They had me do like the the digital penis pump that my one of my balls got stuck inside once oh no because <laughs> i thought well it's digital so i could probably go hands-free and just work on my computer well i, I, I kind of <laughs> cropped the penis pump up against <laughs> the edge of my desk and so you just got you're like this and so i'm typing <laughs> yes and i'm typing and you know there's like a there's like um uh, your poor uh, assistant. like a rubber yeah, gasket yeah. and you 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 lube up yourself and then you put it in there and it, and it, it adjusts to a certain millimeter mercury. So it was at like 30 millimeters of mercury, which is actually pretty hefty. So it's stretching my dick out to like 12 inches. Like right. It's pretty, it's kind of a weird, like alien, like no exaggeration. Yeah. And, and then, never does the wife, no, never really does is. the wife walk into the office and go, what the fuck are you doing today? <laughs> my kids walk hey, in, honey. my wife walks no, in. We're very, no. we're very, oh, well, my kids know exactly what a penis <laughs> pump is. Like, <laughs> I would rather be very open than be like that guy who's sneaking off to the oh what's that in your hand dad this daddy's yeah. giant ass coffee noises? cup with the, with, the, with, the, with the dashboard on it uh and and coconut oil stains about a rubber gasket on the bottom so anyways and i'm sitting there typing and i'm sitting there typing and all of a sudden it's like and oh. and my uh, and my ball gets sucked in oh. i look down and it's just turning purple and blue like within like five seconds oh. so i just desperately oh, start horrible. pulling and tugging and i rip it out of there oh. so lesson learned don't go hands free on, on a digital <laughs> penis bump so they had me trying all this stuff but That's it culminated them wanted like the big one they wanted me to do was like the stem cell injection and they actually helped pe- like they helped pay for me to harvest the stem cells from the adipose tissue on my back, which is a relatively expensive procedure, and also the shipping of the stem cells, the storage of the stem cells. They that's like grow, that, that's almost like ten grand they or grow five them grand. via an enzymatic process, about eight grand. Yeah. Jeez. So, mm. uh, so I thought, well, you know, risks versus rewards. I, I can, I can kind of get into this whole stem cell thing and study it up a little bit, and all I have to do is take the potentially risky step of actually injecting some of these stem cells into my dick. Mm. So so I did it. And what happened with the story coming full circle was a reporter from Gizmodo read my article on men's health and she called me and she said, you know, why did you do this? And I said, well, you know, it helps guys with peronies or erectile dysfunction actually perform better. That's what most of the studies on it have been done. But sometimes I think that if something would take you from not so good to good, that it could take you from good to great. And the idea was we were going to see if this would enhance your erections or your orgasms or your sexual performance. So I did it. And she said, well, did it get bigger? And I'm like, well, <laughs> funny like- you should ask. I, I, I think it did. It's, it seems like it did. Like, like my, check your messages. My my wife has <laughs> commented to that, and when I look in the mirror, it kind of. Well, if, if wifey said seems, so, it is. Yeah, because you know, she probably she, knows yeah, better than anybody. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll do respect to our relationship and you know the the sanctity of her bedroom or or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I mean, like when we're having sex, she's like, you're like you're you're bigger. Like it feels wow. Bigger. So I tell the reporter this. 
and and you know we finish up the interview and a couple of days later the the headlines on the Gizmodo article say man attempts to make dick bigger via stem cell injection and this French <laughs> magazine picks it up it's like man with small dick injects. <laughs> so all of a sudden I'm the guy with the small dick on the internet oh, that's like and that's what happened like with the that game story. telephone you know right. you so so then the Rogan oh. podcast you know Joe and I we, we you know we we text back and forth about archery and fitness and health and stuff like that and I thought we're going to get on we're going to talk about maybe a couple of the hunts we've been on and shooting and you know I went there and I shot the bow on his his techno hunt setup down there which is like a 3D archery setup for indoors where you shoot at virtual animals and we that looks super about, fun was that chatted awesome? about you know working out and hunting and then we get in there to podcast and all of a sudden it turns into like a two hour dick fest of talking about like right. but that was not the original plan and, and honestly I don't want to be that guy I mean <laughs> frankly I would get if I'm some single playboy globe trotting you know and, and sticking my dick in anything that moves I could get that shtick being you know the dick shtick right like being that yeah. guy but I, that's not what I'm interested in. That, that's not the reputation I want to build. But it, but because I did that, it's like a you sounded it, smart. As pe- you did people it, are very good. people are very interested in that, and so that's now the one of the reputations I have for better or worse is being like the dick hacker. So or or as Aubrey Aubrey Marcus calls it the the cock warlock. Cock so, warlock. But I'm really like I'm not. People are like is, is your wife just tired all the time because you guys are just banging all day long with all these <laughs> you know sex experiments you're doing? This we have a pretty normal. Normal life. I mean, we, we we have sex a couple of times a week, and that's you know, funny. And, and we don't have an open relationship. I'm not out there like walking into sororities to test out my stem cells. <laughs> like, it's just not. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, though, it's, 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 this new thing. It's interesting how that article kind of kind of blew up and how far. It I have take. a question I've wanted to ask you because yeah. you have we've been to your place and we've hung out quite a few times, and I know you have an incredible relationship with not only your wife, your kids. You guys have an incredible family. Um, if you guys get into a fight, what is it about? Um, typically, and and it's pretty rare that we get into a fight. Yeah, you, um, you seem like that. You guys, yeah, you guys right, have a great dynamic. Right. Usually, it is because um, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. I am used to being given a great deal of respect in the industry that I'm in. Like people look up to me and you know, I have a lot of yes men around me who are like, Oh man, that's so cool that you're doing this and you're sure. doing that. Not a lot of people say that's a stupid idea. You're an idiot. You, sh- you shouldn't do that. Or not, not a lot of, of, of people kind of question what I do or give me a hard time or say, you probably shouldn't be doing that. You know? So, so occasionally we bash heads on, on that type of thing. You know, when, when that's good, I though. feel as though I'm not getting a lot of respect and sometimes I'm, I'm trying to think of an. I, I I don't like to be vague. I like to think of an actual specific example. Right, that's what I'm searching for. I'm yeah. searching for your last argument or your fight, right. and like what it was. Right, and how that, you guys that's work. what I'm going through my head. It, it was um, <clears throat> the last one. Oh, I I got home and 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 we pride ourselves on on really being you know good parents for the boys and when i leave town i actually have them do you know i, I write out a full sheet like here's the workouts you're going to do today oh, you know cool. this day you're going to do the obstacle That's course awesome, this day dude. you're going to go shoot the bow and i write out you know for them to remember little things i can check off and if you check all this stuff off you do your journaling you do your meditation what a brilliant idea. do your cold hot each day so they do the sauna and the cold pool and i write out these pretty elaborate sheets cuz i travel a lot you know and, and so it helps them you know when dad comes home what a brilliant cool way to still so be to, connected and fathering up, while you're they get traveling. to save up points for their Legos, shoot me photos of their gratitude journal, that kind of stuff. And I got home. This was two months ago after a big trip. And Jessa had lost the sheets and the, you know everything had kind of fallen to pieces. I'm like, boys, were you gratitude journaling? I could, you know, and, and they kind of were squirming a little bit. And I could see that, that a lot of things had kind of fallen to pieces while I was gone. And, you know, and then, then my wife, uh, basically, you know, told me that, um, you know, m- more or less, it's okay. Don't worry about it. No, not it's okay. Don't worry about it. But, but, but more like, Ben, you just don't understand how, how busy we got when you were gone, how many other things were going on. And I was just like, this is not hard to do. These are <laughs> simple habits and simple routines. You make them automatic. And I started to go off on a tirade like I do with a client, right? I was trying to get to freaking do your workout. And, um, yeah, we bashed heads and, and then, you know, usually what I do is I go outside and I take some deep breaths and, you know, this, this happens maybe once or twice a year that we get mm-hmm. into an argument like yeah. that. We don't argue a lot, but typically it's about something like that where I just feel like I'm like, 
wait, somebody's not respecting something that I set up and almost like blowing off something that I find very important. Like that, that's the type mm-hmm. of thing that we'd usually mm-hmm. argue over. Now you seem a very self-aware and self-reflective person. You say you walk out right afterwards. What do you see in yourself that's not healthy or not good for you from the, that type of an argument? I, I do not wear my emotions on my sleeve and I tend to shove them down inside me. I'm a guy who can build up like bitterness and built in pent up emotions mm-hmm. unless I express those. And so example, I've, I've taken the Enneagram analysis and mm-hmm. my, my type is a type three achiever. It's a, it's a wonderful personality test, but one of the things that achievers tend to do is they can be very robotic and expressionless and emotionless in a lot of their business activities. Cause it's all about achieving, achieving, achieving no matter what. And, um, you know, just do this, do that. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And we tend to not wear emotions on our sleeves and stuff builds up. And then if, if I don't express my emotions or say the way that I feel, and that builds up over several months, I tend to have just this, like this explosion of rage where I let it all out. And I've realized that if I'm going, if, if, if I feel all that building up inside of me, that rage, I have to step away, mm. right? Otherwise it'll be, I'm inside. I'm going to punch through the wall and shout something. So have I just you, walk out into the forest and I, and I, and I walk and walk and walk and breathe and just let it all out. Have you created any practices to, pre- to help maybe prevent that buildup? working out <laughs> it's yeah. a lot yeah, probably uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good form of catharsis honestly yeah, like yeah. i like for me uh, a good workout just lets me burn off all that energy and you know i grunt and i groan and i scream and it just get it all out so I, that's I'm, I'm a big fan of working out for that besides your um, besides your and wife also, you? oh, go ahead. Uh, date nights with my wife yeah, so about once every two weeks we go out on a date and we don't talk about the Crucial. kids and we don't talk about business and we just share our feelings our emotions we're going through a book right now called the seven I think it's called the seven principles to make a marriage work or the seven ways to make a marriage work written by this guy in Seattle, fascinating guy. He runs something called the divorce lab and <laughs> couples walk in there and he can tell within two minutes uh, to something like 90% accuracy, how likely a couple is to separate. And, wow. and he has this fantastic book. I think it's called the seven ways to make measure. My wife and I are going through that book where you just do certain exercises together. Like you'll sit at a date night and just talk about, your entire childhood experience and your relationship with your mother and your relationship with your father and we'll cry and we'll, we'll share things we've never shared with each other. And that, that's a very good way to, to ensure that she is getting a release of my emotions and I'm getting a release of hers. And we're not just, you know, passing like ships in the night or building up these pent up emotions that we then let out when we get into an argument. What do you think, what do you think draws you and your wife together that, that, draws all the way back to you guys' childhood. Like, was her childhood similar to yours or is it complete opposite and that's what makes you guys a great, great team? You know, she, she is very much, uh, she, she's actually very much yang to my yin, I would yeah. say. She's a little bit more of like a tomboy, um, uh, ran- Montana rancher girl. And we have very opposite personalities. She's very type B, very disorganized, very unscheduled, oh, really? uh, very artistic. Yeah. Um, you know, she'll she's dyslexic, so she's not good at reading or writing. Like a lot of things that that I'm good at, she's not good at. But she's amazing with creativity and cooking and mm-hmm. art and and yeah, you know, that was one of the reasons we quit homeschooling. Was she just she doesn't she's not a teacher. She hated school, and I loved school, right and. Um, even though we, we grew up in similar environments, like we both grew up, uh, in Idaho after she moved to Idaho from Montana and, um, we, we had somewhat similar upbringings, upbringings, you know, kind of like, uh, more like strict Christian homes that we grew up in and, um, and very traditional, uh, you know, North Idaho. So your values are very, your values are very similar, but your very similar values, very different personalities. Exactly. Right. right. So so yeah, we balance each other out quite a bit. And we makes, were we were best friends for a couple of years before we got married in college. Oh, see, that's cool. Yeah. It makes sense why she uh, why the thing with the kids would happen though too, because you say what she says about with with reading and structure and yep. shit like that. Why that would be something she would be like, no big deal. Exactly. Because I like I'll schedule a tennis lesson for the kids like. A month and a half out with this amazing tennis and oh, dude, I have everything planned. I'll get home and I'm like, how was the tennis lesson? She's like, what tennis lesson? Like, the <laughs> one on Google Calendar that it was all set up and you got the email reminder. She's like, oh, I didn't check my email yet. I'm like, what do you mean yet? And it's like, you know, six days ago was the last time she checked her email. And you know, you look at her phone, and it's got the 72 message notifications on it because she hasn't looked at any of the messages. Like, Love it's it. like that's like I left you a voicemail. Oh, I didn't notice you called. And, and, you know, you can see she's got 12 unchecked voicemails on her phone. So yeah, I mean, we're completely opposite. Whereas me. There's a little red 
message on my phone or push notifications, boom, it's out. Like I pride myself on zero inbox. Like, uh, yeah. So yeah, we're. That's got to be really good for you, though. You know, it's got to be really good for you because you got to know that about yourself that you can be so extreme that having a partner that kind of brings you back down. It very much, um, it, it very much keeps me grounded. And it also really helps me to have somebody who just laughs their ass off at me at home when I put on my blue light blockers <laughs> and my sleeping mask and my binaural beats and my lavender essential oil. And she just kind of, she doesn't take she's it too just, seriously. She's just laying there, yeah. you know, just falling asleep. Have, have so. you found yourself like, because you know that, you know, she's so good for you for that to like ha- practicing, like, okay, this would be a thing that I'd be really frustrated, but like, let, let's let it go. It's one time. It's not, have you found yourself having that conversation with yourself where you get kind of frustrated, you get mad and you're like, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. No, but I think I, I think <laughs> that's honest. Yeah, I, you know, it's, yeah, I still I struggle think, with it. Yeah, then. yeah. I'm 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 very much set in my ways. Like I'm a, I'm just like a, a rigid, scheduled, um, relatively type A person. You know, it's it's how I've built my life on a series of habits and routines and doing twenty squats when you go to the bathroom on the airplane. <laughs> and, you know, all this stuff. And so I, I don't break out of that schedule as much as I I understand people who who don't live that way by by being married to my wife for 14 years you know I, I i really get that client who i work with who i load up with all their workouts and their meal plan for four weeks and i spend you know four hours on a saturday just getting them completely lined up and then i check up in with them the month later and they're like yeah i was traveling i did some <laughs> push-ups on monday and uh here's my diet and it's just like you know it's it's you know whatever peanuts and top ramen and and you know, normally my head would just freaking explode yeah. if I also didn't live with somebody who was like that. Right? Yeah. So, so that, it, it's helped me a lot to understand mm. people who 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 aren't as freaking like anal retentive OCD as I am. What about the things that the you people s- who won't do their coffee on <laughs> Wednesday? <laughs> what about the things 30, that yeah, you've yeah. seen uh, expressed in your children? Do you have you seen like your personality traits, mm. good and bad, that you within your kids? Oh yeah. That that's the weird thing. I mean, Share that. I think and, that's cool. And, These guys and, talk about that with yeah, their kids all the time. I love yeah, to hear like that stuff. My son Taryn. You know, I I, I would, when I was a kid, I was very, um, I, I was very kind of like distant, loopy, um, absent. I was like the absent-minded professor, right? Just just I, I was smart, but I was just kind of out of it and really. In your own sh- world. I didn't give a shit about people that huh. much. You know, I just wanted a, a book and to wander around. And people would tell me stuff, and I'd be like, what? What did you just say? Like, it could, just because I wasn't listening. My son Taryn is very much like that. And I hate it because <laughs> oh, I see, right? I see, yeah. M- yeah, I see me in him when I tell him to do something. Yes. You know, what, whatever we're cooking dinner, and I'm like, "Can you go grab the olive oil?" And then I'll look over there. He's reading Captain Underpants. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> "Olive oil." Great book. He's like, "What?" <laughs> olive oil oh okay and, and for me to see that like you know and and a certain part of me is like oh that's cool i i have a little ben who i can train to be a a, a better big, ben. A big ben a, a better <laughs> yeah. version of me. and then at the same time everything he does that 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 annoys me about <laughs> myself kind of kind of irks me so yeah taryn is very much mm-hmm. like that river is a lot more honestly river is very you know he's type a he's scheduled he's do this he's i'm like yes river go you're <laughs> You're like the person who I aspire to be. And, and then Taryn is just like, you know, he, he's a kid who's probably going to grow up to be whatever, an, an artist who paints abstract with with oil or something like that. That's yeah. so great. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Are there, are there some, cool. uh, what are some of the biggest things that your wife has taught you that you've been able to implement yourself? Because you guys are so different. Mm. I, uh, really the biggest one is, is I, in the whole like, you know, biohacking supplement, bodybuilding, fitness, you know, industry, you're just used to, uh, just from, from like a nutrition standpoint, you know, protein bars and you make your stir fry and your broccoli and chicken and rice, whatever. When I met her, she was just, like, she grew up in this household, this ranching farming household where when you want cinnamon rolls, you go and you make some sourdough bread and you make the frosting from scratch and you grab what you can out Ooh. from the refrigerator and you go outside to the garden and harvest what you want. And when you, when you want to have meat, you got to go and find the sheep that needs to be killed and you kill the sheep and bring it in and, you know, dress it and make it. I wasn't used to any of that stuff. You know, I grew up in the mm. family that was taking baked pizzas and hamburgers and iceberg lettuce. And so I learned a lot from her just about, um, you know, what we might call like a Weston A prices approach to mm-hmm. diet or an, mm-hmm. or an ancestral nutri- nutrition approach, like just living in a very simple ancestral way. That's one thing. Another thing I've, I've learned from her is she's, she's very fit. 
uh, she'll drop into a Spartan race and just crush it or, or a trail run and, and absolutely crush it. But she trains maybe once a week. Like really? a formal training session. She looks but very fit. Day. I remember yeah. when I met her, she She's shredded. That's all she trains? She pushes wheelbarrows around and she She's guard, active all she day. Gardens yeah. and she's what a testament taking care to the, the ghosts and the chickens and it'll mm -hmm. be, you know, zero degrees outside and I look out the window, you know, when I'm inside podcasting and she's chopping wood in her coat, you know, outside with the wood pile. And, well, there you go. You know, it's, it's just... Sometimes I get jealous. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that's that's the life that I that that I need to be leading. You know, but that, it's not. It's not my you know my calling is you know God made me good at at, at writing, and so I'm I'm good at hunched over being hunched mm -hmm. over a computer inside and and working on books and you know podcasting and speaking and you know doing some of the things that I do. But she's just a freaking workhorse, mm -hmm. and and I've, I've I guess I've seen that it really is true that you can build copious amounts of like pretty extreme ancestral fitness just by working all day long well you're supposed to so be obsessed fit. with getting it's constant gym, work yeah. man and it's yeah. amazing yeah. it's amazing what the the technology has done now to where it's limiting us for that movement and how you see our bodies shaping and changing man that's crazy and she, yeah. i have that's i wish people could well they can look on your page and see a picture of what she looks like she's very fit she's, oh, she's, she's very fit. she's got freaking eight pack right? yeah no yeah, she's yeah, yeah. like she's literally like nine percent body she's, fat yeah. Yeah. she looks and like a, a Oh, just like a female competitor, like six weeks out of a show or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's yeah. incredible. But shape. also yeah. healthy though, because a lot of yeah, times no. when women get that lean, they don't have that. That they don't look healthy. But she also, you guys all look very she's healthy. She's never missed a period since we've been married. Like, like I mean, aside from when when she's you know, uh, you know, been been pregnant, and you know, there's there's been some times when you know the hormones have kind of fluctuated a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for the most part. I mean, she's she's just like normal fertility, normal health, like not all the things you'd see with like an OCD, exercising, right. you know, anorexia, nervosa, whatever mm. type type of girl. So yeah, it's really you, interesting. You mentioned how you you said God made you good at uh, at writing, and you mentioned being brought up in a, a very strict, I guess, Christian household. And I, I know you did a podcast, or maybe a couple podcasts, where you talked about. Your faith does that, and and I don't think that's very well known. Does that play a massive mm. role in your? And how life well here? received is it? Yeah, with your audience. It's pretty well received yeah. mm -hmm. because when people are going on their, you know, twenty eighth ayahuasca trip, and they're <laughs> yes, let's go here. Rent, <laughs> <laughs> pursuit of six pack abs and you know trying out eight different diets and you know even at this paleo effects event, everybody's searching, everybody's looking for the next thing that's going to make them happy. Um, you know. It, uh, until you take care of that that inner shriveled up neglected part of you your your soul and we know that that's related to everything from love and life and relationships to belief in a higher power or at least a very intense sense of a purpose for your life a story like a pre-written story that you were born to live out versus this fatalistic notion that we're a bunch of pieces of flesh flying through a rock you know, through space, trying to see who can have the most sex and make the most babies or who can survive the longest. It's, a, it's you know, all that is, is it puts you on this never ending wheel of just trying to find happiness, trying to find fulfillment when, un, until you actually connect with your soul and connect with a higher power and a purpose and a story for your life. I feel like, especially in our industry, people are just going to be constantly searching and so, so for me to know that whatever, you know, I got hit by a car on my bike the other day and slammed my head into the pavement and, you know, a lot of, a lot of bad stuff could happen. You know, I could have gone from being a super fit CEO of a company to just like a, you know, freaking laid out paraplegic with my neck broken. You know, I, I still know that no matter what happens, you know, I, I have that, that soul that you can't take away from me that I believe is going to be around for eternity. No, so it's really it's what I think why your audience receives it really well is because you don't you're not a Bible thumper you're not somebody mm -hmm. like that you don't press it on anybody else now I want to know how that if you have any conviction or struggle because especially here this weekend we're surrounded by the ayahuasca fucking people yeah. nation yeah, yeah without without rolling people under the bus or names and mm -hmm. that was one of the things that you know because I grew up in a very similar home we've talked a little bit about this and and yeah. And so uh, I, I, it took me a while to get okay with even having so many of those comments. In fact, I still find myself getting annoyed a little bit. We just got on, uh, we did an interview just yesterday and, you know, first five minutes, ayahuasca comes up and it's just kind of, I roll my eyes. Mm -hmm. I roll my eyes and, and I, I feel like these people are, are searching some, for something that 
doesn't require getting high or a drug for. Mm -hmm. And that's just because I I believe I was raised that with that. And so how how do you deal with that? Because I know you're around it a lot, yeah. you know? Plant-based medicines do bring you closer to God. They really do. Yeah. Like I, I feel like they're there for a reason. And I've I've been on ayahuasca trips and some pretty intense DMT experience where I've been closer to God than I've ever been inside of a church or you know, during holotropic breath work or, or any other form of non plant medicine or or non chemically infused religious experiences. At the same time, I recognize that they they are not they're they're like a means to an end and they're not the end itself. And I think that a lot of these plant medicines from ayahuasca to freaking weed to iboga, you name it, they were all placed on this planet for a purpose to allow us to sometimes open up and, and have a more intense religious experience or become closer to God. And I think that they can be used in that way to receive divine messages or to, you know, I'll fill up 10 pages of journaling with, with amazing ideas for my life and inspiration mm. and purpose. But I never fool myself into thinking that those are going to truly fulfill me, these plant medicines mm -hmm. or these, these mm -hmm. journeys or these escapes, as much as they're just going to give me some clarity into my actual purpose and the actual story for my life or, or what God would have me to do. That's so, so unique, though. I mean, I mean, I was raised the same way and like it went through a very, you know, it was brought up with a very like Christian background. And, you know, to have somebody, you know, go through those experiences was not not was pretty much frowned upon. Absolutely. So how, how was that yeah. in terms of like, you know, I know you're very visible in your community and, and your church, like how, how do they receive that? I'm not very visible in my church because I'm out of town so much. Well, <laughs> I mean like, you're like, like, Hey, hey man, what's up, preacher? Joining, yeah. us, joining us for church this I mean, week like they after <laughs> being gone for 10 weeks, I see, <laughs> uh, which is actually true. A lot of these events, these races, everything, you're just out of town and you're yeah. traveling on a Sunday. Um, it is something that I really don't talk about that much when I'm at church because there really mm. aren't a lot of like-minded people in my community who are into that. Right. Um, mm. it, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's still pretty rare in, you know, just, a, a traditional American religious communities for this stuff to be embraced or accepted. I find a lot of people who, who do go to church, you know, they're, they're now using things like marijuana at night to help them sleep, but they kind of keep that hidden, right? They don't yeah, talk about like, it unless they know you also yeah. are one of those people, <laughs> right? Who's, who's so true. Smokes the joint. <laughs> don't and, the uh, devil's lettuce. lettuce right. Right. The devil's exactly. lettuce. <laughs> yes. The devil's lettuce. <laughs> and uh, it, it really doesn't have have a lot of mainstream acceptance mm -hmm. you know there's a uh, guy well, freaking jamie wheels out there on the lake behind us yeah. on the on on the boat and you know guys like him and stephen collar mm -hmm. writing these books about how psilocybin can bring you into a more intense religious experience and i have taken a gram or two of psilocybin and gone to church before to kind of tap into that <laughs> oh but shit wow I dude you gotta tell me what, what was that oh. like i mean you you like the music feels like it's, you know, your senses are heightened, as you know, with psilocybin. So right. the, the music is sweeter and the spiritual experience that you have seems deeper, but you feel like everybody else in the church needs to be on psilocybin for you to actually truly have that collective group religious mm -hmm. experience that like Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheel talk about in Stealing Fire. And I like, it's not that I, way in my life. I don't have a group of people who I go and worship with and we're all on psilocybin. You probably should, you know what? You probably like are going to like a non-denominational right. bro. You need to go to like a Pentecostal or like a <laughs> I guess so. Because <laughs> maybe know, we'll get, maybe we'll get like some yeah. psilocybin in the community wine or something <laughs> like that. You know, the grape juice. Pass around um, the snakes. So yeah, yeah it's, it, it's, it's interesting. And I don't want to give people the impression that you need plant medicine in order to have a religious experience or in order to have a deep relationship or with God live a full or life. purpose or anything mm -hmm. like that. But I think that using that type of thing occasionally as a way to to perhaps ask yourself that question, what is my purpose in life? And then you, you go on an ayahuasca mm -hmm. trip or, or a DMT experience and you have a journal with you and you're writing down your experience. And, and for me, it also involves specifically naming and recognizing that that there is a God and that you're, you're attempting to simply see what God has written for your life by going to that place. And for me, you know, any plant medicine experience has never been dark. It's never involved vomiting. It's never involved spirits. It's, it's always just been an ext extremely positive love and light filled experience where, where I'm getting messages from God. I think it's important to, you know, that people understand, and this is, I mean, this is established by uh, you know, psychologists and I'm reading Carl Jung right now. I'm reading a lot of his works and we we seem to need 
to worship something. Now, this isn't a, uh, this isn't a criticism. It just seems to be something true about humans. And if it's not uh, God, then it might be money. It might be science. It might be the state. You know, one of the first things that these totalitarian uh, states do, like these, like the the, the terrible twenty, you know, the history of the twentieth century with these communist and fascist and totalitarian states, is one of the first things they do is they they undermine the church and they, in mm. some cases, make worshiping anything illegal. Um, and a, as a result, people worship the state, and that becomes their god. And, and we see what happens many times in in our modern Western societies is that y- people start to worship things like money or material objects or drugs or substances like ayahuasca, or you'll see people saying, saying things like, I don't hear people say as much, you know, well, God did this for me. I hear this a lot. The universe, the universe did this for me. Look what the universe did. It's like, you don't realize you're replacing yeah. the word God with the universe. It's Same really, thing. Yeah. Or, or they're crystals or whatever. And so we seem to have this desire, this need to believe in something um, bigger than ourselves, and if you try to fill that with something, and here's the thing: with it, it, have you heard of the term Christian atheist? I just learned this the other day, and it sounds like that doesn't make any sense. I just learned this the other day. I uh, you come up with a better name for that, though. I know, Ch- <laughs> Chaseus. <laughs> Chaseus. Uh, well, and uh, here's the thing: like uh, some of these practices are, are have lasted for a long time because there's a lot of wisdom in them, and what a lot of atheists are doing now is they're starting to follow the beliefs and structures of, you know, the, the Judeo-Christian religions because they see how effective it is and how much it works without necessarily believing in God. So they say, oh, these are good practices. And so they're calling themselves Christian atheists. So uh, yeah, if you don't, you know, it, it, that spiritual side, that finding meaning side, I don't think you can find it from material things. And I think if you constantly are, are looking for those, for, for that fulfillment, it's a bottomless hole that you'll never fill. Yes. And this is where you'll see, this is, you see this with people with all the money in the world and they seem to have everything going for them and they're just, they're eternally depressed and sad and life is, has no meaning. And so, you know, a lot of times people, you know, I've asked in the past, very intelligent people and scientists, how do you rectify your belief in this mythical, you know, or this, this supernatural power with your understanding of hard science? And um, some of the best explanations I've gotten is, well, it, it gives me a meaning that, you know, nothing else nothing else gives me. Yeah. Certainly people will make an argument for quantum physics, for the movement of proton particles, for there's even a book called Proving God, in which they used quantum physics to attempt to prove God. I really don't think science can necessarily prove uh, it's, it's the wrong tool. It's, yes, not, it's, it's not it's not a tool that it can do that. Yeah. I, I I don't think you can prove I mean it would be like I, mean, I, I, I love the way I, I love the way that Paul ma- simplified it. I think it's just you know if you were to go down that rabbit hole and you eventually still have to ask, well, what made that? Mm-hmm. You know, v- eventually you can keep going, 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 and eventually you still got to say, well, what made <laughs> right. that? What yeah. made the very first particle that caused the Big Bang? Right, exactly. Right, Back when the Big Bang. I mean, wa- you can watch and uh, figure out its watchmaker. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I think yeah. that's such a great. It's yeah. very simple. And some people say the same thing about God. They will say like, well, in the beginning was God, but what made God? And that's where you get to the point where, and I'm totally comfortable saying this. I'm, I'm just like, I don't know. Right. Okay. Right. I don't know. But mm-hmm. all I know is that my life is a lot happier and meaningful and more purposeful. And that all these blue zones display this, this relationship with a higher power. And there's this built in human story to where we almost have this craving or this need for, for this, this puppeteer in the background like writing these stories and running this this amazing journey mm-hmm. for our lives and it's it's almost like a more hopeful way you'd think it'd be fatalistic mm-hmm. right like oh this is what this is my purpose i was born with and i can't change but it's actually an amazing way to live mm-hmm. once you recognize back, that one of the greatest wait, one wait, of the wait, greatest wait, wait. Oh, oh, back up back up to the the blue zone connections i didn't know there was one with uh oh people who who believe yeah. in god live longer that's a, yeah, that's it's a like fact. the japanese uh purpose the ikigai they call it and it's it's also something you see in all these blue zones, a, a belief in a higher power or a greater story that's written for your life or some form of a religion. Uh, it's 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 consistent across mm-hmm. you know, all the blue zones. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, I didn't it, know. People, we, who, people who believe in well, God. Well, you've talked about the blue zones yeah. several times on our yeah. show, but not for not with the yeah. correlated with that they've had. Well, yeah. you know why they don't make it? They don't really talk about that as much as their eating habits and activity and all that stuff because they tend to. Which I find funny because in my opinion, I think that is a far more important than well, all the other things well, we've talked I think, about. They discredit it to they, a certain extent. It's also related though. 
I mean, what's religion associated with is associated with fasting, with certain mm-hmm. dietary principles, community, it's certain a playbook. lifestyle principles, community, uh, stories. Which is uh, why I think it's more important. Degree of emphasis placed on relationships and love. Uh, but in, that's not the way they say it. What they say is, oh, what they have in common is that they have community or mm-hmm. that they have, you know, they have lots of close friends, but they don't say, oh, it's because they. They're, they're, they're spiritual or religious. They cut that part out. They discredit it quite a, quite a bit. But that's actually, that's the driving force. One of the, one of the greatest, and look, I'm, I'm agnostic. I'm not particularly religious. And, but I, and I used to be an atheist, but I'll tell you what. I mean, you cannot deny this. The, the, one of the greatest gifts that the, in particular, the Judeo-Christian religion has brought mankind, and I'll argue this with anybody all day long, is the belief in the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the sanctity of the individual, that each individual is special, made in what they would say in God's image and has uh, inalienable rights or, or liberties or whatever you want to call them. This is a radical notion. This is a crazy notion. When you, you get to understand before that became a thing, like kings and queens and emperors were gods they, and there were people who were below you and they, you were not equal. Like you're a peasant, like, no, you do what I tell you or we'll kill you. And, and nobody bat- batted an eye, not even the peasants. Many of them thought, yeah, this is the case. And so then you had this, all of a sudden you have this religion saying, no, everybody is special. Even the most crippled, the most sick, the, the sinner and the, the king and the, the poor and the rich, you're all, under, you're all the same under the eyes of God. And so this created this mentality that brought forth Western civilization, which has brought more equality, more wealth, uh, more, I mean, science, science, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the, 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 you know, the Renaissance was, a lot of that was funded by the church. And of course they had their, their separation at one point and they fought and that's more of a, of a power struggle. But I mean, that's what gave us the beliefs that we have now about people, because that is, that is radically not a normal thing. The normal state of man is squalor, poverty. It is tyranny. It is if you're stronger, you're bigger, and you have more power, you control other people and you take from them. And this was totally acceptable. And this is just how things were. And it flipped it on its head. And that would not have happened had you not had people who believed that this came from a higher power. Because there's nobody with who the hell with, with power and money would have said, you know, just just voluntarily, hey, you know what? The, the, everybody's equal, actually. Those peasants down there, they, they deserve to be treated. Nobody would have given that up, but that came from a higher power. So believe what you will. You don't have to be religious, but give it its credit. Without that, we would not have free societies, plain and simple. It just wouldn't, it just 100% came from that. So I have a very deep respect for, even though I don't consider myself a, a religious individual, you know, when I see some of these things, I'm like, hey, you know, it's fucking ancient wisdom. And if you try to throw it away because you think, oh, we're modern and science has got all the answers now, uh, I think you're wrong. And in fact, I see I see a lot of danger with that because science that is unchecked by, you know, by morality is science fiction. It's the fucking crazy, scary shit. It's the people doing things just because they think they can, not because not, and nobody's asking if they should. So Ben, I know you have a, a healthy moral compass. What do you, what scares you about our future? Let's address the elephant in the room, right? We're down here for Paleo FX in in Austin, and people are are you know rushing around. As we know, everybody's asking around, where can I try ayahuasca? Uh, the the ketogenic diet and and CBD oil and all these things are super super duper trendy. Um, open relationships are another big one that mm-hmm. people are pursuing now in terms of. Um, you know, just wanting to go out and try all of these things that folks feel are going to bring them ultimate fulfillment in life, um, completion. And the problem is, you know, a lot of this stuff winds up simply creating a very materialistic culture, a uh, very commercialized culture, and a culture that doesn't have quite the the stability that we get from. You know, I know uh, Chris, what's his name, who wrote the uh, the Sex at Dawn book, would 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 flip over this. But I mean, the, this idea that that there is you know a certain amount of social stability that can be had through uh, through monogamous relationships and a family that's built upon a strong sense of legacy and culture and tradition and husbands and wives who are together for long periods of time. You know, kids who follow the ancestral diet of their parents and their parents' parents. And, 
you, you that stands in stark contrast to a bunch of people like shuffling around like bumblebees trying 18 different kinds of diets because there is no you know tradition or 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 sense of meaning or anything else in their lives when it comes to actual completion so i think you know what what we're looking at right now in fitness and nutrition is is a lot of people who are unfulfilled and who are searching and so we just see the, see new things popping up over and over and over again this incessant uh, you know, like I talked about earlier, it's like, it's like a, like a treadmill, you know, like, like, like one of those little lab rat wheels where people are just going and going, mm-hmm. going and searching with no meaning. So that, that's what I think it, we, we really risk is just, you know, a, a very kind of like weak culture who's always looking after the next new thing, the next shiny penny, instead of having legacy and tradition and ancestry and stability in their lives. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would mm-hmm. agree a hundred percent. The, the open relationship, uh, you know, trend, and it's not really a trend. I mean, it's it's come and gone quite a few times in our culture. I know in this in the in the sixties and seventies there was a strong push in the counterculture in that direction. And uh, you know, I always stand by this. Uh, you, you know, people should be able to live however they wish as long as they don't hurt anybody. You own your body, and if you want to do that, that's great. But when people push it and promote it as this is what a, real a, a love is. A better way of living. This is a better way. The Here's something right. They are the, more evolved. Some people no, use it as like they're, listen, they're more evolved. Listen, do, are you going to have to sacrifice expediency and, uh, you know, quenching your, you know, immediate desires? Are you going to have to sacrifice some of that w- by being with one person and committing yourself? <laughs> well, yeah, but the same way I commit, I have to sacrifice the... The, you know the 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 sweet taste of that cake that's right in front of me for better overall health and wellness mm-hmm. and it's it's the same thing you know building that life with that person and working and sacrificing together there's nothing more fulfilling i can't it, it's the difference between sex and making love it really is. It is and and it's nothing wrong with having sex if that's what you want to do but if you're seeking the fulfillment that you can only get from making love through sex, you'll be seeking forever and you'll be having a lot of sex and you'll be able to a lot of things and be taking a lot of drugs to try to get that feeling, but you're going to end up in a bad situation most of the time. Maybe somebody can do it out there. Bottle full of bub. I'm into having sex. I'm not into <laughs> making love. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Uh-huh. Laying it down. To yeah. Yeah. I should yeah, have been so, beatboxing you. That's right. right. My bad. Yeah. Anyway, that was my rant about that. So. <laughs> wow. Well. Well, I got I got to wrap up yeah. somewhat soon, fellas. No problem, uh, brother. But I, I I should comment, uh, Doug. I know you've been kind of quiet during during this podcast, but we got to get you one of those anti radiation pads. You can protect your balls, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting He's on your concerned. lap for the past hour and a half. I've been very concerned about. <laughs> he put it down. Uh, he put the laptop Doug's down. Future children. Do you know what's yes. funny is I, I, I always when I'm driving, you I balls. catch myself doing this and I yeah. freak oh. out right away and I take the yeah. phone. <laughs> no, I, I always travel with these things called Hera pads. They're like anti radiation pads that you set your laptop on and you just put it anywhere, like on an airplane on your lap or wherever. Yeah. I'm hoping for the opposite effect. I don't know about you, but I read a lot of comic books when I was a kid. And mm, in comic yeah. books, radiation made mm. people fucking awesome. <laughs> this is true. So I'm thinking I'm going to have superhero balls. Got a big get a spider spider webs, Spider-Man yeah. dick. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. balls. Shoot just spider like webs. Big yeah. green glowing <laughs> yeah. hairy balls. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ben. It's a good look. As always, a fucking great time, man. You're one of our favorite people. Yeah, yeah. Space, for sure. Thanks. Love seeing you, dude. Love Thanks. seeing you, man. Appreciate it. Amazing. Amazing, guys. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.